Do you know, it's a very, very hard, difficult, painstaking, and time-consuming job to be feminine and to maintain that. Well, you're fired because you don't use your arms when you tap dance. You're like a gorilla out there. I gotta go. <laughs> Raquel Welch was born as Joe Raquel Tejada on September 5, 1940, in Chicago, Illinois. She was the first child of Armando Carlos Tejada Arquizo and Josephine Sarah Hall. The family moved from Illinois to San Diego, California, when Welch was two years old. Welch attended the Pacific Beach Presbyterian Church every Sunday with her mother. At age 14, she won beauty titles as Miss Photogenic and Miss Contour. While attending La Jolla High School she won the title of Miss La Jolla and the title of Miss San Diego the fairest of the fair, at the San Diego County Fair. This long line of beauty contests eventually led to the state title of Maid of California. Her parents divorced when she finished her school years. Welch graduated with honors from high school in 1958. Seeking an acting career, Welch entered San Diego State College on a theater arts scholarship, and the following year, she married her high school sweetheart, James Welch. She won several parts in local theater productions. In 1960, Welch got a job as a weather presenter at KFMB, a local San Diego television station. Because her family life and television duties were so demanding she decided to give up her drama classes. After her separation from James Welch, she moved with her two children to Dallas, where she made a precarious living as a model for Neiman Marcus and as a cocktail waitress. Welch initially intended to move to New York City from Dallas, but moved back to Los Angeles in 1963 and started applying for roles with film studios. During this period of time, she met one-time child actor and Hollywood agent Patrick Curtis who became her personal and business manager. They developed a plan to turn Welch into a sex symbol. She was cast in small roles in 1964, in two films, A House Is Not A Home and the musical Roustabout, an Elvis Presley film. She also landed small roles on the television series Bewitched, McHale's Navy and the Virginian and appeared on the weekly variety series The Hollywood Palace as a billboard girl and presenter. intensive physical pleasure <laughs> we'll have you moaning for mercy oh, no. center. Cause I dig you when I'm ready to groove Welch's first featured role was in the beach film A Swing in Summer in 1965. That same year, she won the Deb Star while her photo in a Life magazine layout called The End of the Great Girl Drought created buzz around town. She was noticed by the wife of producer Saul David, who recommended her to 20th Century Fox, where, with the help of Curtis, she landed a contract. Studio executives talked about changing her name to Debbie. They thought Raquel would be hard to pronounce. She refused their request. She wanted her real name, so she stuck with Raquel Welch. She was cast in a leading role in the sci-fi film Fantastic Voyage in 1966, in which she portrayed a member of a medical team that is miniaturized and injected into the body of an injured diplomat with the mission to save his life. The film was a hit and made her a star. Fox Studio loaned Welch to Hammer Studios in Britain where she starred in One Million Years B.C. In 1966, a remake of the Hal Roach film One Million B.C., her only costume was a two-piece deer skin bikini. She was described as wearing mankind's first bikini and the fur bikini was described as a definitive look of the 1960s. The New York Times hailed her in its review of the film, a marvelous breathing monument to womankind. One author said, although she had only three lines in the film, her luscious figure in a fur bikini made her a star and the dream girl of millions of young moviegoers. A publicity still of her in the bikini became a best-selling poster and turned her into an instant pinup girl. The film raised Welch's stature as a leading sex symbol of the era. Adam Love, you're a real killer. Wish you hadn't said that, Timothy. So was he. Her first starring vehicle, the British Modesty Blaze style spy film Fathom, 1967, was filmed in Spain for 20th Century Fox. Second unit director Peter Maddox said Welch was at that time quite inexperienced, exactly like one of those American drum major rats. But she tried very hard and went to see the rushes each day, gradually improving. Do you like it in bed? Uh, uh, yes. Good. So do I. 
In England, she appeared as Lust Incarnate in the Peter Cook, Dudley Moore comedy, Bedazzled, a swinging 60s retelling of the Faust legend. It was popular, as was the western, Bandolero, which was shot in Del Rio, Texas, at the Alamo Village. She co-starred with James Stewart and Dean Martin. I think she's going to stack up all right, Stewart said of Welch. Welch starred as a freedom fighter leader in 100 Rifles, a 1969 western directed by Tom Grease and filmed in Almeria, Spain. It also starred Jim Brown, Burt Reynolds and Fernando Lamas. The film provoked publicity and controversy at the time because it included a love scene between Welch and Brown that breached Hollywood's taboo against on-screen interracial intimacy. The film is remembered for the spectacular shower scene in which Welch distracts the soldiers on the train by taking a shower at a water tower along the tracks. The director, Grease, tried hard to convince Welch to do the scene naked, but she refused. It was one of the many instances Welch resisted going nude on screen and pushed back for years against producers who wanted her to act or pose nude. In 1969, Welch also starred in the thriller Flare Up and had a supporting role in the dark comedy The Magic Christian. Welch's most controversial role came in Myra Breckenridge. The moment of truth has finally arrived. She took the role as the film's transsexual heroine in an attempt to be taken seriously as an actress. The production was characterized by animosity between Welch and Mae West, who walked out of the film for three days. The film was based on Or Vadol's controversial bestseller about a man who becomes a woman through surgery. The film's producer Robert Fryer stated, if a man were going to become a woman, he would want to become the most beautiful woman in the world. He would become Raquel Welch. In 1972, Welch acted in Kansas City Bomber and had a cameo in Bluebeard. In Kansas City Bomber Welch played a hardened roller derby star and single mother who tries to balance her desire for a happy personal life and her dreams of stardom. Life dubbed Welch the hottest thing on wheels for her role. She was due to star in a 1982 adaptation of John Steinbeck's Cannery Row, but was abruptly fired by the producers a few weeks into production. The studio claimed she was not living up to her contract by refusing early morning rehearsals and was replaced with Deborah Winger. Welch sued MGM for breach of contract. Studio executives claimed in testimony the reason Welch was following through with the trial was because she was an actress over 40 and generally actresses in that age range cannot get roles anymore. Welch's evidence at trial proved there was a conspiracy to falsely blame her for the film's budget problems and delays. The jury sided with Welch and she won a $10.8 million verdict against MGM in 1986. Despite the win, Welch wished the whole episode never had happened. I just wanted to clear my reputation and get back to my work, my work in movies, she said. But she was blackballed by the industry and the incident affected her film career on the big screen from that moment on. In 1997, Welch starred on Broadway in Victor Victoria, following Julie Andrews and Liza Minnelli in the title role. That year, she also acted in an episode of the comedy series Seinfeld, entitled The Summer of George, Welch played a highly temperamental version of herself, assaulting series characters Kramer and Elaine, the former because he fired her from an acting job and the latter because Welch mistakenly thought Elaine was mocking her. Now what are you doing? Uh, nothing, I just wasn't moving my arms. <laughs> That's it. You're going down. In 2001, she had supporting roles in the comedy films Legally Blonde opposite Reese Witherspoon and Tortilla Soup. In 2002, she starred in the PBS series American Family, a story about a Mexican-American family in East Los Angeles. Her next film was Forget About It. She also appeared in Welcome to the Captain, which premiered on CBS television on February 4, 2008. In 2015, she played a role in The Ultimate Legacy. Welch's final roles were in 2017 where she appeared in a sitcom titled Date My Dad and she reunited with Robert Wagner on screen for decades after starring together in the biggest bundle of them all. She also acted in How to Be a Latin Lover that year. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to present the award. Now you left me off your list. Ooh. My name is Rome, Tony Rome. I'm a private detective. How disappointing. And I thought you were someone dangerous. Her personal life saw her marrying her high school sweetheart, James Welch, on May 8, 1959, with whom she had two children, Damon Welch and Lat and Tani Welch. James and Raquel Welch separated in 1962 and divorced in 1964. She retained Welch's last name until her death. She married producer Patrick Curtis in 1967 and divorced him in 1972. In 1980, she married producer Andre Weinfeld, divorcing him in 1990. Welch wed Richard Palmer, owner of Mulberry Street Pizzeria, in 1999 but then separated from him in 2003 and later divorced. Welch said she would not remarry. Welch posed for Playboy in 1979, 
but she never did a fully nude shoot. Hugh Hefner later wrote, Raquel Welch, one of the last of the classic sex symbols, came from the era when you could be considered the sexiest woman in the world without taking your clothes off. She declined to do complete nudity, and I yielded gracefully. The pictures prove her point. Welch refused to take all her clothes off on screen or pose naked throughout her career spanning five decades, saying this was the way she was brought up. Tani followed her mother's December 1979 example and appeared on the cover of Playboy in the November 1995 issue and in a nude pictorial inside it. Welch is one of the few actresses, and one of the earliest, who had a lead role in a Western film. Hanny Calder was a clear influence on later revenge films. Quentin Tarantino said the film was one of his inspirations for Kill Bill. Tragically, Welch passed away on February 15, 2023, at her home in Los Angeles, following a brief illness. She was 82. That was a brief look at the life and career of the late Raquel Welch. What did you think? What was your favorite Raquel Welch role? Did you like her television appearances? Ever see her on Broadway? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to check out my Carl Vincent Vampire Hunter franchise also in the comments below. And subscribe to my channel if you like these shows. Until next time. This is Andrew in for Kevin Gibbon saying live long and prosper, may the force be with you, and keep reaching for the stars.